The painting chosen for this month is by Karoli Ferenczi, looked on as the father of Hungarian Impressionism and Post-Impressionism. He painted this version of the Sermon on the Mount in 1896, and I am using it as it illustrates the Gospel reading for the Feast of St. Barnabas the Apostle, Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 to 12. What I like about the painting is the informal setting that Carly has created for Jesus to instruct those sitting around him and the diversity of the crowd, young, middle-aged and old, including a soldier in a helmet. But they're all intent on listening to what Jesus is teaching them, totally focused on the man and the message. Do we really focus on the message that he is imparting? What do you see in the painting? In Exodus, there is a description of the covenant between God and Israel. Jesus came to make a new covenant, which will be sealed in his blood, which will be shed on Calvary. Matthew 26, verse 28. In Exodus, there is a description of the making of the covenant by Moses, throwing blood on the people. Exodus 24, verse 8. Going off on a quick tangent, Luke also recounts the teaching of the Beatitudes in chapter 6, verses 17 to 26. But the encounter takes place on a plane. Luke is following a tradition that meetings take place on a plane, and a mountain is for prayer. In Luke it is clear also that Jesus is addressing the disciples, not the crowd. John the Baptist and Jesus have both announced the coming of the kingdom, and the commandments of Jesus show the way of life we must lead to enter the kingdom. Jesus is in the kingdom, and the Beatitudes show us a portrait of Jesus in this kingdom, and it's a road map for us. Jesus is poor. Jesus mourns. Jesus is meek. Jesus gives his life for righteousness. Jesus is merciful. Jesus is pure in heart. Jesus worked tirelessly for peace, and he was certainly persecuted for righteousness. Jesus is now teaching the disciples, and that means you and me. How are we doing? Do we tick all the boxes? Do we actually strive to bring about a just society? Or just tick the box on the ballot paper when elections come around and trust the MP or councillor to do the job for us? Are we really peacemakers and merciful? Or are there people we still have to fully forgive? Do we bury our antagonisms? Or are we at peace with whoever hurts us? There may be occasions when we need to be healed. There are times when we find it difficult to be at peace with someone and we need the Lord's help. We have to be honest with him and admit our suppressed anger or dislike. 
The Lord will help us if we ask. Every day in our prayers, ask for the grace to be at peace with Mr. A or Mrs. B. It might take a week, or a month, or three months. But the Lord will heal our wounds if we sincerely pray to be at peace with them. Jesus has shown us how we need to live our life to be in his kingdom. And if we open our hearts to allow his love to change who we are to how he wants us to be, we can tick all the boxes. Blessed are those who suffer in the cause of God.